When it comes to books, cover design is important for a number of different reasons. And it's not just important, but ignoring it is kind of a tragic missed opportunity. We're all familiar with the old adage, you can't judge a book by its cover. And while that's a metaphor, when it comes to actually judging actual books, you kind of can, and we all do. Cover design has become an increasingly important thing in the world of publishing today, and I personally love it because a book is a singular piece of art, usually written by one single person, whether it be fiction or non-fiction. But a book is also a collaborative effort. It is actually multiple pieces of art when you factor in cover design, because even just a cover is multiple pieces of art. You have the design, you have the layout, you have the art itself, you have the font. These are all different artistic disciplines, and they all factor into the sales and the interest in a book. I love cover design. So many people out there, including people that I personally know and love, buy multiple copies of their favorite books because of particular cover designs. And I think that's great, I think that's cool. Once you you own a copy of a book, you should be done. But so many of us aren't because we cherish that book and we like the idea of multiple covers. And I think part of the reason for that is covers express what's inside of a novel. And I am going to be talking mostly about fiction here. A cover designer can often be tasked with understanding the setting, the characters, the themes, and the tone of a book, and then trying to express all of that, or at least some of it, in the cover design which almost makes it feel like a cover artist is a critic in a way. They have to interpret a book and then try to present a piece of art that represents it. That's kind of critical analysis. What do you see in this book? How are you going to express that through your art? I think that's really cool. And that's what makes cover design exciting and beautiful and really, really important. Because a cover is a piece of artistic expression about the book and its contents, but it also guides the reader or potential reader when they're looking at a book in a library or in a bookshop. You look at a cover and you immediately start to analyze it. You appreciate the art you appreciate the font. You start to question what the book is about. You can do all of this within seconds. And that makes cover art important. You see the cover, maybe you like the title, maybe you're familiar with the author and maybe you're not. And you see the art and you think, well, that's gorgeous. I can tell from this cover that it's a gothic novel or a fantasy novel, and I like that, or I'm interested in that. I can also tell that the tone of it is going to be bright or dark. Just basic things like that are very important. Oh, I like dark stories. This is fantasy. This is dark. Okay, starting to tick off boxes here. Now I'm going to turn the book over and look at the blurb and see if I'm interested. And the design and implementation of blurbs is in itself a separate kind of talent and art form, which I'll probably cover in another video because I have a lot to say about blurbs. Cover design is absolutely vital to our experience. So let me show you some examples. This is Frankenstein, my favorite novel of all time. And this is actually the only copy that I own. When I was around 22 years old, I decided to read Frankenstein. And I found this particular copy in a bookshop. And I love this copy. I love this hardback. I love this cover design so much. I've never bought another copy. I've never felt the need to because this is so stunning to me. But finding this particular cover with this particular layout and design and font, all of it had a part to play in me deciding to buy, spend money on a copy of Frankenstein and sit down and read it. While I was reading the book, I would occasionally put it down and I would see the cover. It would be sitting by my bed, sitting on a coffee table, or I'd pull it out of my bag and I'd be excited to read it because I'd look at the cover and it would remind me that this is a really cool and interesting book. The cover beautifully reflects the contents of the book and this cover artist probably feels how I feel about Frankenstein. The fact that it is absurdly over the top. This enormous lightning strike over a silhouetted castle is ludicrously camp. It is emotive, it is embellished, and that's what Frankenstein is to me. The stitches around the edges add an extra layer of theatricality and campness to it. Again, I love that. And when you turn it over, instead of a blurb, you've just got a quote from the creature. Love that. It's also got subtly sprayed edges that are gray. I don't personally love sprayed edges, but I like the fact that it's just a little bit of gray just to imply that this is gothic. Gray edges, red and black and white design, just reinforcing the fact that this is a dark, bleak and gothic experience. Beautifully done. 
Now look at this. I wonder how many people watching this have wondered if I was gonna bring up Fitzcarraldo, and yeah, I'm gonna bring up Fitzcarraldo. Fitzcarraldo Editions are one of the biggest indie publishers in the world. They are a UK-based indie publisher who have made an incredible name for themselves, publishing almost exclusively amazing literary authors from all around the world. These guys and their writers win prizes constantly for how good their library of works is. Fitzcarraldo is amazing. You can just see a Fitzcarraldo book on a shelf, pick it up and read it, and it'll probably be incredible. And this is a great example of that. This is Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga Tukarczuk, a Nobel Prize winning author from Poland. I love her works. I've read this, I've read Flights, and I've loved them both. I haven't read the books of Jacob because it's enormous and I just can't yet. <laughs> Olga Tokarczuk is a legend, she's incredible, and Fitzcarraldo are amazing at what they do, but they're fucking covers. Jesus Christ, look at this. I used to quite enjoy this. I liked the idea of it more than the execution. Fitzcarraldo publish both fiction and non-fiction. Their fiction is blue with white font, and their non-fiction is white with a blue font. And there's even a stamp here of their logo. It's pretentious, but in a cool way. And there's something I used to really like about it, but no, I've gotten bored of it over the years. I'm kind of frustrated by it now. It feels like a real missed opportunity to have a great, artist, a great cover designer, pay homage to Olga Tokarczuk, to Annie Erno, and all the other great authors that Fitzcarraldo have published, to come up with some beautiful cover art that captivates and becomes recognizable as the cover to that book. And that's something else that often happens is how many of you, put your hand up, when you think of a book that you love, you think of the cover and covers are so often extremely famous. Think about The Great Gatsby, one of the most famous book covers ever the original cover to The Hobbit, Catcher in the Rye, the original cover to Pride and Prejudice. And then you've got this? No, 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 I'm sick of this. This publisher is squandering the works of a potential, theoretical, incredible artist who could do these authors justice. And it's a shame. So many books have become iconic in part because of their cover design. Think about 1984. One of the first images that pops into your head when you think 1984 is an eye, the eye of Big Brother. And so, so many covers feature an eye, a piercing, unblinking eyeball. That is part of the aesthetic, part of the message, part of the theme, part of the tone. It's all conveyed in this piercing eye. And at this point, it's kind of important to have that eye on the cover of 1984. It's important to convey the themes within the text. The thing that got me thinking about all of this was actually Ithaca by Claire North. I recently read this book and I was really impressed with the cover design because I love Greek mythology retellings. I've read so many of them. I talk about them all the time. And you immediately know based on the color, based on the design, based on the title and the font, this is another Greek mythology retelling. But it actually goes further than that. There's a kind of analysis that you can do with so many great book covers. And I really appreciate that. And this is no different. This is a book about Penelope and how she struggles to survive and thrive as the queen of Ithaca while her husband Odysseus has just vanished. He went off to fight in the Trojan War. Everyone else came back, he never did. So look at this cover. You've got Penelope here, but she's faded. She's an outline. She looks like a ghost. It conjures up the question, who is she? It makes us remember the fact that so many of these Greek mythology retellings that have come out over the last 10, 15 years have done so because the women of Greek mythology have never been given their due. They've never been appreciated in the way that all of the male heroes and all of the gods have been. She's empty. She's transparent. This book fixes that. This book lets us know that Penelope isn't colorful, isn't dense, isn't present as a character, and it's going to fix that. You can also interpret it as her feeling hollow without her husband around, feeling empty, feeling purposeless. She looks bored. She's reclined on a chair, weaving away as she famously does, but she's pale and ghostly. None of it matters, none of it means anything. You can analyze this cover in the way that you can analyze a text, and that's a huge reason why cover design is so important. Look at this. I love this cover. This is actually the US cover of My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. This is a horror novel set in the 80s, and the cover perfectly conveys the fact that this is a nostalgia-inspired book, kind of like Stranger Things. It's designed to look like a VHS, but more than that, 
a particularly battered one. You see that? I didn't do that. That's part of the design. It looks like cardboard. It's cracked and it's worn and it's rubbed away. It looks loved, it looks old. It looks like it was found somewhere in a forest. The idea of making this look like a VHS is genius because it conveys the tone and the themes and the setting and the time period. But VHS tapes of this period also had these really iconic covers. If you pick up a VHS tape from the early 90s, you're gonna see a particular kind of retro art. And that art is also presented here. This cover reminds me of so many iconic horror movie posters from the late 80s and early 90s. And then when you turn it over, the blurb looks like that of a VHS and it's even got photos to make this look like it's actually a film instead of a book. Because this is a book that carries the nostalgia of 80s and 90s slasher and horror in general movies rather than books. It's a book inspired by film, inspired by cinema, and the cover design in multiple ways conveys that, both in its art and its design and even in its font and even in its blurb. Everything about this is fantastically well thought out from a design perspective. I love cover design. It is so great that a book is a collaborative effort between an author who is one artist and designers and artists and calligraphers. There are so many artists who put their work into a book. And we do judge books by their covers. We see a cover like the ones I've just shown you and we become interested. They are eye-catching. A huge part of publishing is marketing. You need to market your books. So you need to think carefully about your cover design. The only reason a person who knows nothing about Fitzcarraldo or Olga Tokarczuk might pick this up if they randomly saw it in a bookshop or a library is because the title sounded interesting and they decided to turn it over and look at the blurb, maybe read the first page and then decide, but that's kind kind of jumping ahead. How is anyone supposed to know that this is worth their time, depending on what kind of a reader they are, if they've never heard of Fitzcarraldo, whose name at this point does kind of speak for itself, but it didn't always, and if they've never heard of Olga Tokarczuk. Also, as a lover of literature in translation, I need to bring up again the fact that Fitzcarraldo editions never ever name their translator on the cover because they're so precious about their cover design, and I'm sick of that. Name your translator. This, by the way, was translated by Antonia Lloyd-Jones and you can find her name on the back, not the front, where it belongs. People are influenced by cover design. It's really, really important. Look at this. I love Dune, great science fiction book, blah, blah, blah. And I've actually owned two different copies of it. There are so many different covers when it comes to Dune that you really are spoiled for choice. Hundreds of different cover designers have had the chance to project their idea of what Dune is onto the cover of various different editions. And that's so great. This is beautiful and I love it. It sits on my shelf and it looks incredible. I love and respect book cover design and cover art so, so much. We need it. We need to appreciate it. Most of us do. And I hope that I've kind of proven that you can judge a book by its cover, at least to a point. The cover will get you interested. It is the thing that gets your foot into the door when it comes to picking up and buying or loaning a book from a library. If I hadn't found this particular edition of Frankenstein, I might have put off reading the book for years. I don't know. This cover impacted my decision. I'm not gonna pretend it didn't. And aside from the psychology of marketing and capitalism and drawing people in, artists are important. And it's great that a book gives an artist the opportunity to express themselves through a book's cover. The collaboration between writer and artist is a beautiful thing. I'm very proud of cover designers. I think they're incredible people who do amazing work. Thank you for listening to my rant. Subscribe for books.